Then I got hesitant of not having the confidence of knowing how to be the right mom anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. what if I say the wrong thing? Mm -hmm. What if I do the wrong thing? Am I going to hurt her? Hi, friends. Come on in. We are so glad you're here. Welcome to Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast, where Joyce teaches the Word of God in her practical, no-nonsense way. And my beautiful friends and I talk about the real stuff of living it and hold nothing back. I'm Ginger Stocky with Aaron Cluley and Jay Williams, three friends who are all in very different stages of life, but understand the importance of having loving, honest Christian people and friends around you. And when we need a little bit of help, we call Miss Joyce, and she is always right there to answer our questions or to ask us some that we don't know how to answer ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes you just need to talk about life with your girlfriends. So consider yourself one of us now. Come on in here and let's talk it out. Talk it out. It's new every day. It's new every day. Talk it out. Yeah, Ginger had some rhythm. Is Aaron, is Aaron gonna? I'm not singing today. Okay, because okay. no. she sang. She sang a couple weeks ago. I regret my decisions in life. <laughs> <laughs> that might be I one. I love your voice. <laughs> I clearly made it made it very obvious to all of you to edit that part out, and I do believe it didn't make it out. So <laughs> it's it's dangerous it when could be you do behind things, the scenes or something. Maybe. Well, well, when you do things that are in other people's hands and you say edit it out, um, yeah, it's Especially not when it's happen. embarrassing. When it's fun, yeah, <laughs> but it will that, stay. <laughs> Well, today, appropriately yes. enough, we are talking about silencing self-doubt. Yes, so I'll be practicing this over <laughs> and over as I <laughs> listen to myself sing. Oh, yeah. But it's such a great topic yes. for everyone yeah. because no matter how the scale of confident or insecure, no matter where you fit on that scale, there are moments in our lives that we all face self-doubt. Yeah. And sometimes you go through phases that you have much more of it. And some people deal with it more than others. Everyone needs to talk about this topic. And we're also going to have one of our friends with us on the show. And she is so great. She has no idea how great she is. Yeah, and so, so we're going to talk together with our friend Rachel about this issue because like all of us, she's dealt with it mm -hmm. too. So she has some great things to share with us. Yes. So let me let me just start out by asking you girls, when you even hear silencing self-doubt, what is the first thing that pops up in, in your mind? Like maybe an area that it's, it's more of a stretch for you. Where does that self-doubt creep in? What's your face? I can't tell what your face is saying. Tell me what you're thinking, you know, no, Honestly, what I was thinking was, which one of us is going to go first? You know, <laughs> like, we all, like when you ask questions, I'm like, I gaze into Aaron's eyes. <laughs> who's who's going for it first? And the voice of self-doubt is saying, not me, not, not me. me. Not no, me. Right? <laughs> I think that it's something that comes up like all the time. Like, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. There's certain seasons where you deal with it more and you I, for myself, I've had seasons where I struggle with insecurity more, doubt myself. But also, I think like on the day to day, I'll be in a meeting and I'm like, oh, I probably shouldn't have said that. Is everybody's what's their face on Zoom looking mm. like? Or second guess myself when it comes to being a mom and like, oh, did sure. I not do that right? Am I not like the other moms? Ouch, yeah. So I think it's yeah. I think it's always a part of our lives, but then also, you know, struggles season to season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, that wasn't even your question. No, it. I think it's good because I agree Thank with you. you. I okay, agree you say you. more. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it creeps up all the time. And so that's why I think this topic yeah. is so important for us to talk about so we can learn how to silence it because it's. Mm -hmm. I believe it's Satan's job to make us doubt who we are and whose we are. I think that's a part yeah, of it, right. you know, to steal, kill, and destroy. He's, yeah. he's a liar. And so he's going to sneak those little lies in our ears all the time. And so for me, I've always had... Even though I've been a pretty confident person, I know mm -hmm. how to push myself past my doubt. Yeah. Um, but always inside, I'm like, oh, right. I mean, because I'm I'm five one, and even here, like we talk about it all the time, like I have to use extra pillows because <laughs> <It's so cute. laughs> I noticed on a lot of the pictures my feet weren't touching the ground. So <laughs> those are things that I like. It's little things like yeah. that or. Do people understand me? Am I yeah. communicating clearly? Like, and then I'm like, should I said that? Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's mm -hmm. it's a lot of things that creep up, whether it's be about physical appearance or about what I say, or yeah. even yeah. sometimes how I look. I don't even realize how sometimes my face can 
can just, you know, like, yeah, I don't, yeah. so I always am like, oh, was I looking mean or was I looking happy or what? Yeah. Like, so yeah. all those things are like creep up all the time. Yeah. We, we have all of those different areas that that self-doubt can creep in yeah. and can be really insidious. Like when, mm-hmm. when you're not even noticing it, all of a sudden something happens mm-hmm. that's just like lights a match. Yeah. And it's like, oh. You know what? What did they think about that? Or why did I say that? Mm-hmm. Should I have not worn this today? Um, you know, yeah. and it might be like you said, parenting. Talk about an area of self doubt. Mm-hmm. If you are completely confident in your parenting skills, please come be a guest on our show. Yes. <laughs> I'll write down everything <laughs> that you say. Take, take notes. Um, whether it's professionally or yep. or just personally in inter interrelationship things, so many areas that we all deal with this area of silencing those voices of self-doubt. I even think, too, growing up in the church, so we are taught humility, which is a great thing. Mm -hmm. But then there's a balance between humility and, like, self-deprecation. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so finding the line of, I want to be apologetic or um, making sure you're comfortable. But also there's a boundary of that affecting how you see yourself mm-hmm. and making sure everybody else is happy yeah. at the detriment of how you feel about yourself. Right. You know what I mean? Those yeah. are great points because those are some of the things we want to talk about that, that pressure to bow down maybe yeah. to, yep. to other things that you think are more important. Mm-hmm. And, and that's not always true. It needs to be that balance of what Christ wants us to do and not that self yeah. of, oh, I, I need to slip away because I don't mm-hmm. feel confident in this case. That that thought, so many people um, you know, apologize a lot. I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm so sorry for whatever. Yeah. That kind of pressure. Um, not stepping out when God asks you to because you just don't feel like, even though you're pretty sure you need to do this, you just don't feel the confidence in doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think this discussion... Will help Absolutely. a lot of people. Yeah, I know it will. Yeah. So we're going to start with Joyce explaining what it feels like to have self doubt in your life. Let's listen. You know, a believer with no confidence is like a big, huge jet airplane sitting there loaded with people with no fuel. And actually, I believe an unbeliever who has confidence, even though I'm sure it's self-confidence, not confidence in God, I believe they can accomplish more than a believer who has no confidence. Why should we not have confidence? We've got Jesus. We've got the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives. We've got everything that we need. Satan seeks relentlessly to make us feel bad about ourselves. But we can stand up strong and be bold and say, I know who I am in Christ. You know, if I could just tell you one little biblical example before I have to finish up here tonight. You know, God had a great plan for David, the little shepherd boy. And he didn't really get too much natural encouragement in his beginning. Don't be surprised when you step out to do something more than what you're doing if you don't get a lot of encouragement from somebody else. That's why it's important that you've got to believe and know what God is speaking to you. So if other people say, well, that doesn't make any sense or I don't think you can do that. I mean, I had friends of mine, supposed friends of mine, Say, well, we've been talking and we don't, we don't think you've got the personality to do what you say you're going to do. And the truth is they were right. I probably don't have the right personality, but I do have Jesus and that makes up for anything I don't have. Right? See, there's a lot of stuff you don't have, but you do have Jesus and that makes up for what you don't have. And the little shepherd boy, David, knew that. So therefore, he wasn't put off by the rejections of people. And I don't know how well you know your Bible. At this point, I don't have time to go and look up all these scriptures, so I'm just going to tell you the story. But Saul had become a bad king, and Samuel was sent to anoint a new king. And he was told to go to 
the house of Jesse, and he would find there among his sons the new king that was to be anointed. And so they brought all the sons except one. And Samuel didn't know that they weren't all there, but as they passed before him, one after another was, this is not him, this is not him, this is not him, this is not him. And there was even one that Samuel said, well, surely it's him. I mean, he's like got it all together. <laughs> well, no, God doesn't see the way man sees. God sees the heart. That's why you can have less natural ability but have a heart that's totally available to God. And God can use you in a greater way than somebody who's got all kinds of natural talent but doesn't really love God as much as you do. Here's what qualifies you to be used by God. God, I can do nothing without you. I sure love you, and if you can use me for anything, here I am, send me. That's your qualifications to be used by God. So that is how you silence <laughs> self-doubt, right? That mm -hmm. is the cure for the insecure. And whether you feel like you've got a lot of talent, but not enough confidence, or you don't have that much talent that you're aware of, God knows it's in there and how to bring it out of you. So we have a free resource. Everything that you're hearing from Joyce during the podcast today, um, there's so much more of it in this free resource. It's called The Cure for the Insecure. It's a free download of her teaching. Go to joycemeyer.org slash talk it out and grab it because it's so, it's so, so good. great. So good. So well, good. like we told you, we have our friend Rachel Athern with us today. Hi. And Hi, Rachel. We love Hello. Rachel. We <laughs> Rachel is the supervising editor of the magazine here at Joyce Meyer Ministries, mm -hmm. Enjoying Everyday Life. Now, you, you hear that title and you realize this is a, a place of responsibility and Rachel is so capable and confident and good to go. <laughs> but like all of us, that's not always been the natural state for you. Is that fair enough to say? Like we all have to learn our confidence and yeah. silence those voices of self-doubt. Yeah, definitely. I think it's a process for mm -hmm. sure. What have been some of the so. things for you growing up that maybe push down that confidence level and increased <laughs> those voices of self-doubt in your head? Yeah, you know, I... I'm more introverted. I'm quiet. Um, or like when I was little, especially I was, so I had that, you know, shyness about me. And so I guess I sort of thought that in order to be confident, you had to be an extrovert. Mm -hmm. You had to be really outgoing. And those are the people who are confident. I knew that if I just had good grades and things like that, that I would feel better about myself. So it kind of turned into, um, this performance-based um, confidence, yeah, I yeah. think. I like that. Um, so I, if I just knew the expectation of what I had to do, I would be able to meet that because I'm also a rule follower, you know. Um, and so I would get good grades and people would be pleased with me. And then that would build my confidence in mm -hmm. myself. Did that work all the time? No. <laughs> no, that's the plan. Did not yeah. work. <laughs> no, it didn't work because what ended up happening was I turned into like a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I set that bar so high for myself that it wasn't um, sustainable. It wasn't, I yeah. wasn't able to meet those standards. Yeah. Um, and so it just, it just leads to burnout that way. Mm -hmm. I had a question for you because yeah. I know I've, I've struggled with that as well, mm -hmm. but how did you, how do you, I don't know if you still do, but how did you feel when you would like miss the ball or drop the ball or feel like you didn't meet the mark? How would, like, can you express how that felt? Yeah, it felt so discouraging because I had the pressure on myself, you know, and then not able to make that, meet that expectation that I had, whatever it was, you know, a grade in school or, you know, I didn't um, do so well at presenting something as I would have liked to, mm -hmm. you know, at a meeting or something. Um, and so then mm -hmm. it just feels like, it's just discouraging. I, you know, you lose your, you lose your confidence. You're talking about being a perfectionist and trying to be perfect in all those, those ways. And whether you're a perfectionist or not, it, it can be our thoughts that mm -hmm. really change the way we perceive things. We may have been um, a raging success, but in our thoughts, right. we failed. Oh, right. So um, that, 
our thoughts and our words, what we say about ourselves as well. For you, um, we, we're talking about that tendency that everyone has to apologize. And you said that you felt like sometimes you had to apologize to make other people feel comfortable. Yeah. Tell me what you mean by that. Yeah. Um, so it could be a little thing. Somebody bumps into me. You know, and then I'm the one who apologizes <laughs> for it. Okay, I totally so do that too. Little things like that because I want them to feel comfortable. Like, yeah. like you know, they're not a failure because maybe I would if I bumped into somebody, I would feel like, oh, what a you know, like, yeah, what a dope or yeah. <laughs> what this. But, you know, I like, totally get that. Yeah, and so and so then yeah, that's how I try to diffuse the situation, I guess. Yeah, that Does that. Make that sense? feeling that we have to apologize all the time mm-hmm. for ourselves, yeah. mm-hmm. even when we don't have a reason to or, mm-hmm. or don't need to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like I pass it on to my kids. I can see my reflection in my kids because Caden will be like, if he drops something, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And I thought he picked that up from somewhere. So he's like mirroring what he sees. Mm-hmm. So I totally get that. Yeah. That <laughs> my thing is response. is not even the I'm sorry. It's also, It's always when I say something, I'll tend to say but th- you don't have to, like, uh-huh. you, you, like yeah. you don't have to like that, or you don't have to do that. Like, I do for that. me, for, yeah. you, you know, for so me. I'll say, like, oh, even yeah. if it's a, like a professional concept or a thought, I, I catch myself doing this all the time where I'll have something that I really feel confident about, but I don't know if it's something where I'm trying to brace myself for for them not to like it, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. like yeah. that could be a defense just mechanism. Just in case. Yeah. Just in case. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah. out there. I'm yeah. going to say yep. this. And I always, I, yeah. I, I tend to do this a lot. What, you know, like I'm going to, I preface mm-hmm. what I'm going to do. Yep. I'm going to tell you yeah. this, um, and, but you don't have to, you don't have to like yeah. this. Uh-huh. And so I don't know what yeah. that is too. That's kind of like my, I'm sorry, I guess. Yeah. 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 Like a defense. I definitely it's like a defense that. mechanism yeah. before that, just in case I don't perform right. You know, I gave you out. She was apologizing at the dentist not long ago. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the lady. So the, my hygienist, you know, she has all this stuff in my mouth for the cleaning and everything. And she's talking to me and I'm not able to respond. And so I Which apologize. You think she right? because she does it every day. So I was apologizing to her. Like, I'm so sorry that I can't, I'm like not able to say it. I'm I'm sorry. Sorry. I can't answer. <laughs> it's yeah. We apologize for, for silly things. I think especially as women too, mm, it yeah. tends to be more so, but I totally relate to what you said, Jay. Because I know even in meetings sometimes when I'm presenting ideas, I always give like, not always, but a lot of times I'll give an out of, this is just one one approach, but I'm sure there are many others, which, you know, of course there are, but do I, do I need to say that, right. you know, or right. feel like I'm um, setting myself up to look stupid, you know, or yeah. that kind of thing. Which is so crazy, because on the flip yeah. side, like, you're brilliant, and <laughs> I you. depend on you so much, and I just, like, we see so much in you, and so... When you have an idea, there's no doubt that um, whether we do it or not, it's going to be great. Yeah. But you <laughs> see it so differently because it's coming from mm-hmm. your own lens of what's happening in your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And couldn't that exactly. possibly be also trying to protect yourself from appearing mm-hmm. overconfident too, possibly? Oh. Like protect yourself from maybe being like, I too got this. Con- mm-hmm. too I don't cocky. want to seem too yeah, yeah, you pushy know. Yeah. or. Yeah. That's yeah. something yeah, that we, true. I think as women, we do that as well. Mm-hmm. Like we, Sometimes, oh, yeah. you yeah, know, sure. don't want to appear too confident in what we're saying. Mm-hmm. So we'll water down or downplay whatever mm-hmm. we have to say just to soften the blow. Yeah. 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 Rachel was kind of pushed by God, which I think we all need sometime when mm-hmm. she was sent to Africa. And was that a time in your life where you asked the question, I'm, I'm not sure about going to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have the confidence to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, it was my first my first trip outside of the United States. And so I felt like I, I really knew within myself that God was calling me to Ethiopia for a short-term missions trip. And so within that, I did have this, which is contrary to m- me then, but I did have this confidence of, I know that I know that I know within myself that this is something that I need to do. Um, and so, yeah, I took that step of, which was a really bold move, you know, <laughs> to like, I didn't even know much about the organization at the time. <laughs> I just like Googled them and was looking for It trips. was not Joyce Meyer <laughs> Ministries. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it was just really amazing how God orchestrated that whole thing. And it really taught me um, about 
that I can have confidence in him and there's an ease to that mm. and there's there's an excitement to that confidence whereas the perfectionism side is really um it's cha- it's it's exhausting you actually. cannot be perfect in africa no it is not possible there <laughs> are, not. are far too many things that will yeah. throw you off <laughs> yeah yeah yes <laughs> so yeah it was um it was an amazing experience. That's interesting but. though, because it sounds like nothing could have changed your mind from going because you knew that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, that's definitely true. Yeah. Um, in fact, like, so I just had this moment with God where I, I said, basically, God, I'll do, I'll do anything. I'll even stay in my hometown, which I desperately wanted to escape from. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I think he knew I was serious. <laughs> oh, yeah. She really and, does. <laughs> yeah. So I set some time aside with God over a couple of days and everywhere I looked, it was Africa, mm-hmm. just Africa, Africa, Africa. So that's when I Googled that organization and found this, this place and decided that I just signed myself up and I applied. And then like halfway through the fundraising process, um, I realized that my mom sponsored a little girl through the same organization. Wow. And not cool. only that, I was going to meet her and be at that same center. So God oh, took me. God thing. Yes, yes, it really was. So God took me from this small town in upstate, upstate New York and brought me <laughs> all the way up. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. a double yeah, up. It's like, way, it's like Montreal, practically. <laughs> so. um, and, you know, took me all the way to Ethiopia to meet this little girl and her whole family and encourage her. And so that really boosted my confidence too. Like, wow. I mean, I heard from God. Mm -hmm. He has a plan and nobody, you know, when you hear from God and you know that he has a plan for your life, nobody can shut that door. You know, he just, yes, yes. (laughs) (laughs) That's good. That's good. So, yeah. So Mm -hmm. as, as we're talking to all of our friends out there and some of them are saying, wow, someday I want to be Rachel. You know, I want to be in a position where I am the editor of Joyce Myers Magazine. You know what I mean? Um, But there maybe where all of us were a long time ago, you know, um, maybe quiet, not enough confidence, just learning what God wants for them. What are the steps that you would encourage them to take to silence that Mm self-doubt and build the, the inner strength with God to be able to do what he's asking them to do? I think the important one important thing is just knowing that you don't need to change yourself to be confident. Mm, that's good. That yeah. um, you just need to know who you are in Christ and the work that he's done in your life is enough. Um, and when you really put your confidence in him and his plan for you, um, just keeping that in your mind, I think will really help you to walk it out. Yeah. Um, that's great. Spend time with God and... I know that's that might seem like an easy answer, but just spending time, you know, and, and the word says, I think it's Isaiah, in Isaiah, you know, I'll show you the way, walk in it. This is the way, walk in it. When, yeah. you, when you're walking step, step in step with God and just listening for his voice. But then there's also a lot of words um, that people will throw at you, just, you know, negative things. And mm. so it's just so important to ultimately know who you are mm-hmm. in Christ and I think that's really the difference is knowing the enemy's tactics. Mm-hmm. Um, like Jay, I remember you talked about in a in a previous podcast, like having the enemy's cheat sheet, like we have that. Yeah. And yeah. that's so great just to to know his strategy and then be able to combat it with God's word. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's good. It's so good. Great encouragement. Yeah. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Thanks You're so, so much. wonderful Thanks. talking it out with all. us. We love you. <laughs> I love you. We, we think Rachel's a great example of a confidence that is in balance, you yeah. know, not a confidence that is overconfident or or insecure. And I know that's God working in your life and teaching you to do that. So mm-hmm. thank you. I so love much. you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to go back and listen to a little bit more of Joyce because she has much more to say about what God's word says about why we can have confidence. Rachel, thank you. Bye. Listen, and we'll talk more about this. You know, in thinking about the Apostle Paul, we were reading that scripture this morning in Philippians where uh, he was talking about the two kinds of righteousness you can have. The righteousness that's found only in Christ or a righteousness that you earn by your behavior. And he said, look, I've got everything going for me. I mean, I'm educated Pharisee. The Pharisees followed the law. 
you know, nobody has more going for them in the natural than I do. He said, yet I consider it all trash for the priceless privilege of knowing him and being found and known as in him, not having any righteousness of my own, but only that which he gives. So if you think about the situation, I'm quite sure that Paul was judged and criticized and rejected by his peers for his decision. Matter of fact, there's like 13 years where he was out on the backside of somewhere and nobody even really says anything about what he was doing. You know, sometimes you got to go through some hidden years and some silent years to get to know God really good, and then he'll bring you back out of the wilderness. <laughs> what, John the Baptist was in the wilderness for all those years, and the Bible doesn't tell you anything about what went on in there, but man, when he came out, repent! <laughs> I'm sure that Paul had to pay a price, but boy, was it worth it. Don't let fears and keeping everybody else happy and insecurity and a lack of confidence. And I know what some people say, but, but I feel, <laughs> but I feel, you know what? I will preach it from now until the day God is done with me preaching whenever that's going to be. And I hope it's not until I go to heaven that we do not have to live by our feelings, but we can live by what the Word of God says. She tells us that every time. She, she sure does. She's that right. comes up a lot. Yeah. She's right. about your feelings. We really do. It yeah. is sometimes easier said than done, yes. but it is absolutely right. And when yes. we get it, it changes things. Yeah. 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 Feelings are, are strong, but we, we serve a God that's stronger yeah. than our feelings. And yeah. so... Even what, what Rachel was saying, and it's something I had mentioned before, like really knowing who you are mm -hmm. and and even when those feelings come up and those doubts come up, just remembering who yeah. you are. I, I sound like Mufasa. Mufasa. <laughs> <laughs> Remember who you are. Well, that are. was so good. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Okay, so Mufasa. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, remember when we talked about the armor of God? Mm-hmm. Do you remember that from the Bible? And <laughs> you know, you have, you have your shield of faith. And so I just picture like when people are throwing stuff at you or the mm -hmm. enemy is those, those self-doubt things, you just throw that shield up. And it, the more practice we get with that, the more we can like have them bounce off. So those self-doubt yeah. self thoughts aren't sticking every time. You're right. So We're, too often we grab them and yeah. we take them in. And it becomes fuel yes. for our yeah. self-doubt. Our self-talk. And so we repeat so it. so good. Yeah. Bounce those back off. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's funny when you said that, because I literally was thinking about the armor of God, too, when I was studying hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And I thought about what you had said about the helmet and how your helmet isn't just this little hat. It's like, it covers everything. Yeah. It is a full <laughs> head helmet. <laughs> it's a big old, like, astronaut thing. Covering the mouth, <laughs> the brain. But it yeah. goes back to what Joyce talks about all the time with the battlefield of the mind, you know, like, protecting your mind and then also protecting yeah. what you say. Yeah. Protect, like, the little song, Oh, Be Careful Little Ears, What You Hear, mm -hmm. just all of that stuff goes into how you can combat that in that moment. Because yeah. if you're yeah. thinking it, and you're allowing it in, and you're listening to it, and then you're saying it, mm -hmm. and you're putting it in the atmosphere too. So speaking those confident words over, yeah. you know, over ourselves. I don't want to say yourselves because it's me too. Like speaking those confident words over ourselves mm -hmm. is a way that we can hold that shield of faith up and block all those darts. Absolutely, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. The yeah. armor plays a big role in it. It is. It is. It's, it's really important. And like we were talking about, the real key in all of this is our thoughts because. Mm -hmm. That self-doubt comes up in what we're thinking and what we allow our mind to mm -hmm. concentrate on, think over and over, what we're saying out of our mouth. Are, are we saying, I can't do this, you know, I, I'm not good enough, I'm not whatever, or yeah. are we saying what God's Word says? Mm -hmm. So I've got some scripture here, and I want to throw them out, and you guys tell me what you think about the scripture and how it applies, mm -hmm. or even how you would apply it to your own value and what we're talking about here. It's like a quiz. Okay, go. <laughs> it's not a test. There are no right or wrong answers. But <laughs> you have a kind of. I'm but, pretty sure there are. Um, wrong okay, ones. yes. So 
Here's one, and this this is one that everybody knows, but I think we shrug it off, right? Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ oh, yeah. who strengthens me. When we have self-doubt, mm-hmm. I think sometimes we believe that Christ can do all things, Yes, but will he help me do it? Yeah. What are your thoughts with that scripture? Just last last time when we talked with Joyce, she was telling us to not say that things are too hard. Mm. And then she just said it again yesterday, how often we go to that um, excuse of why we don't do things is because mm-hmm. it's too hard. And I think we feel that way a lot about, or I do about my confidence. Um, I I can't do that. It's too hard. I'm not, I'm not capable or those kinds of thoughts. Uh-huh. Yeah. So it is, it's, I totally believe God can do whatever he wants to. He totally can do the impossible, but probably not with me. <laughs> yeah. So I think what you're saying, exactly. I, I separate myself from what he's saying in that. Yeah, even though he's saying it for each yeah. and every one of us. I totally think he's saying it for you, too. hundred <laughs> <Thanks. laughs> percent. Well, we'll let you know he's saying it yeah, for you, too. Okay, thank for you. you. Yeah, as well. thank yeah. you. And that bounces back to our feelings. Right. Because mm-hmm. we don't feel it, yep. therefore it may not be true. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and then I think of um, when, when Jesus died on the cross, he left us a comforter. So mm-hmm. when I think of that scripture, it's two things that stick out to me because he— you know, one of the Trinity lives in, he lives in me. Like yeah. he is a part of me. So yeah. if he can do it, I can do it because we are together. Yes. We are, mm-hmm. it's all up in here. So I can do it. Even when I don't feel like it, then that, that's when I say, you know, like Holy Spirit rise up in yeah. me. Like, like when I'm afraid, yeah. help me to just go forth and do what I'm supposed to do. And then the other thing that sticks out is all like, and mm-hmm. I, I post this and I talk about this all the time. Like, cause I'm always like, well, maybe you can't do that. And then like, Oh, or maybe I can't do that. Not he, because I think I, I know he can do everything. Right. But I'm like, well, maybe I can't. You know, I can do all. Uh-huh. That That's not yeah. some. That's right. all. So those are the two things that stick out with me on that one. But we put him in a box. Uh-huh. Yes. For what we think Definitely. he can do in our lives or yeah. all that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the key word is through. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because if we leave out the th- through Christ, who hmm. gives me my strength, mm-hmm. then we're trying to do it in our own in power. Our own yeah. mm-hmm. And then it does come into that, I failed, I was wrong mm-hmm. when I when I said I can do all things, but I failed. Yeah. But it it's not that. It is, I can do all things through Christ, who yeah. gives me strength. So we're all going to make mistakes sometimes. Mm-hmm. Not everything is going to go perfectly, mm-hmm. but God is still working because He doesn't fail. Yeah. yeah. So I think that through word in that mm-hmm. scripture... Is so important. Yeah, I've had such a sense of ease these days with that scripture. Yeah, yeah good. It takes the load off. Yeah, totally. like it, oh, takes it does. The, it takes the pressure off. Like when I start feeling a lot of like anxiety or feeling that self doubt mm-hmm. rise, yeah. I literally just, I, I do something real practical. I take a deep breath and say, Holy Spirit, fill me up. This is your thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is your thing. And then it really does take the pressure off. Yeah. I think That's one so of the things that has really helped me exactly with what you're saying is to realize. I'm very good at giving God the credit for things. Yeah. But I like to take the fall for things when when Ooh. I fail. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if I'm going to give God the credit, I need to trust him in the fact that he's going to work when I'm mm-hmm. afraid I'm going to fail. Mm-hmm. So if I if I can trust him, then it's all his. Yeah. So all there's no it. separation of God getting the credit and me failing, it's we're working in tandem. Yeah. Yeah. And it gives you a confidence That's that you good. didn't have before. I'm going to get at my cheat sheet real fast. Oh, okay. For a Bible verse that I yeah. underlined. This one. Go for it. It just reminds me of what you just said. So Matthew 6, 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. And same kind of thing with that verse. I've heard that verse a thousand times, but I was just reading it. Yeah. And if I seek first him and what he wants and trust him that he's going to do it through me, then he's going to take care of all the other pieces, whether or not they work out how I want or whether or not I slip and fall and fail in this thing. Yeah. He's probably still going to work it out because I sought him first. Right. That's so good. You're going to give him the credit either yeah. way because you sought him and his will mm-hmm. above your own desires. Mm-hmm. That's good. Okay, yeah. here's another scripture I'm going to ask you guys. For you. <laughs> you think about it. Um, okay, the, I'm going to throw out another one that everybody knows and recites all the time, but if we really let it sink in, it can change okay. our confidence level. Jeremiah 29, 11. Fave. I know the plans I have for you, Say it plans for mm-hmm. a good future. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes we, again, think, I-, I know God has a plan, but I don't know what it is, so I might mess it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if instead we can stand on 
their plans for good and plans for our future. So how does that impact your confidence level or uh, silence your self-doubt? Well, it helps me know that I can't mess it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, again, it's about, especially when, when you have struggled like me, like what Rachel was talking about, that perfectionism yeah, and too. like performance, mm-hmm. like as I mature in Christ, as I'm a just mature period, like I've, I'm learning how to let go and literally let God and just say, mm-hmm. you know what, mm-hmm. this is your plan. Mm-hmm. Like I can't mess it up. He can't mess it up. You know, like she yeah. can't mess it up. Like, no one can mess up the plan. That's great. No one can step in and take that plan no out of No one can God's take that plan. Now, yours. people can take themselves out of plans, yeah. but the plan, that doesn't stop the plan that he has for me. Yeah. As long as I stay focused on him, like I can be confident mm-hmm. that Sure. That plan is going to give me a, a, a bright future and an expected end, like yeah. something that's exceedingly abundantly above what I can ask or think. So I, I get excited now instead of like, <laughs> you know, we're so glad. There's so much- <laughs> we're so glad. <laughs> that's scary. That is not a good look on that. <laughs> we're glad you have that was my That was my <laughs> doubt face. <laughs> There's so much freedom when you realize that because... Mm-hmm. I am a perfectionist too, and I have a, a bit of people pleasing in me. And I'll give you my list of other things that I deal with in my life. But <laughs> when you realize that that there's freedom in that, like you can trust him, so I don't have to be paralyzed by fear. I'm going to mess up and make the wrong choice, or say the wrong thing because I'm going to mess up this and God's whole plan for my whole entire life. Once we can realize that it's on Him, then there you can walk in freedom and peace. You can just sort of enjoy what He's doing in you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I so wish scared. I totally wish I had my cheat sheet, but I I, I left mine. Um, so, but there you is to borrow mine. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at yours. Like, I wonder if you have my scripture on there because I can't remember the reference. But what does it say? But it says, <laughs> um, "I'm confident of this very thing that He that began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ." And so that's the song that was a song that my mom used to have us sing. It's a scripture, but it was a song that I grew up on. That that's what helped me even when I was little and had doubt about things I'd be taking a test and I'd be like I'm confident of this very and I would just sing it yeah. but that scripture just says he will perform it until mm-hmm. the day of Jesus Christ which means he's gonna he's gonna see that thing to mm-hmm. the end I can't mess it up mm-hmm. like that plan is the plan yeah so when self-doubts begin to rise up because they do in all of us yeah. at, at different times when those things start to rise up in you what are some things that you can tell our friends to do that that you do that combat them? Mm-hmm. I'm a plan for myself. I know, like practically speaking, if I if I have those thoughts of oh, you really screwed that one up. Why did you Why did you say that? Why did you wear that? Um, I'll I'll sometimes out loud say stop, mm-hmm. and just you just have to stop the thoughts because you can once you start, it's just going to rabbit trail you to I'm basically a failure in my whole life, and why am I doing anything? And I. What's the point? Yeah. But it's so much, it's, you gotta stop it. So stop on his track. Sometimes I'll say stop um, reading the word and going over these verses, like you just said, there's, we said five of them and there's 5,000 of them mm-hmm. that says who we are in Christ. Yeah. It says what his plans and purposes are for us. When we read those, you can't not stop and realize who you are. Right. So those are my go-tos. Yeah. One of, uh, well, a couple of things that I do, I like to say this. It's a double negative, but I've been on these. Like, Satan ain't got no new tricks. You know, like, you know, like, <laughs> I had to think about it for a second. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, Satan, like, basically, Satan has no new tricks. So yeah. he's going to use... I like the other way better. You know, Satan yeah. ain't got no new tricks. You know, like, because then I have to, like, like make them seem so little. Like, oh, like, you've been messing with me on this since I was a little kid. Yeah. Like, this is old. And so since I know that... I don't, I want to be honest about it. So even talking about it with friends of of things that I've been insecure about. So even talking about it like today, I like, I typically now when I get those doubts, I usually keep a notepad or post-it notes and I write the opposite. That's good. I tend to write the opposite. And if you look in my bathroom mirror, on my bathroom mirror right now, I have different color Mm post-its all over it. It's kind of tacky looking and it doesn't really go with my decor, (laughs) but I don't care because I'm able to look at the opposite (laughs) of all of the things. I'm very visual. You're doing Uh, war in that Yeah, it's war. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. And so especially when, you know, when you don't have the makeup on, when when Mm -hmm. your hair is not done, you know, when you're not feeling all the best and that's when Satan likes to talk 
to you when you're just in yep. the raw, like just looking at yourself. And so I post them all over my bathroom and I typically make notes of, I, I didn't, I didn't feel like I was, I spoke well, or mm -hmm. I didn't, I don't feel like I sang good. So I'm writing, I'm a great speaker. Mm. I'm a great singer, you know, That's through so Jesus. Good. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I just write those things so I can say, yeah, I am, you know? Yeah. So, so that's what I do. Yeah. What do you do, Ginger? That's great. Because you're really good at this. <laughs> I See, imagine my, you... my self-doubt just went, oh, if she only knew, you know? <laughs> Tell me what's happening but in there. Instead, I should say, thank you. That's yeah. really sweet of you. No, let me give you an example of something that I've had to deal with kind of recently. Because like you said, Jay, I, I'm... I've always been, it's personality, I guess, mm -hmm. or even just knowing that I was raised in a home where they always told me, you can do all things. Yeah. So I've always been a confident person, but there are always things that come into your life that all of a sudden your confidence falls off a cliff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I I had a situation not too long ago with one of my daughters, and we've always had really strong relationships, you know, really um, adore these girls. And had a situation where things just got a little rocky with with one mm -hmm. of them and so i asked her are you are, is something going on and and she told me some things in our relationship mm -hmm. and i was grateful that we had that talk and it yeah. was good for us and instead of just seeing it as progress which i did but it also kind of sunk in yeah. to where then i got hesitant of not having the confidence of knowing how to be the right mom anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. what if I say the wrong thing? Mm -hmm. What if I do the wrong thing? Am I going to hurt her? Is she going to think this? Mm -hmm. When you do that, the first thing it does not only hurts you, but it hurts your relationship because you're pulling back and you don't, you're not yeah. yourself anymore yeah. because those voices of self doubt become bigger mm -hmm. than the voices of knowing who you are and knowing that my relationship with her is a good one yeah. and that God is guiding me in how to be a good mother. Yeah. So it doesn't mean I don't fail. That's the key. Of course I fail sometimes. Sure. So one of the things that I had to do was go back to the basics. Mm. All those things that I prayed when the girls were really young and I prayed all the way up as a mother. Lord, help me know how to be what she wants for me, to be the right kind of mother, to fill myself and her yeah. with your word so that I'm getting it and she's getting it. And instead of thinking, is she going to think this? Hmm. I really had to focus on God, tell me what she needs. So then the focus isn't on our relationship or her hearing things wrong. The focus is on how can I be there for her? Yeah. Even if I get hurt, mm -hmm. you know, how can I be a better mom? And Whoa. Those so you made things, it about her and not about Exactly. You. When I got hurt, I was making it about yeah. me. And instead making it about her... Oh. Making about being the kind of mom that God wants me to be for her mm -hmm. took a, a lot of that pressure off, and it squelched that self doubt. Yeah. And again, it's not because I do it all wrong or do it all right because I don't, but it set my sights mm -hmm. on her and the Lord instead of my hurt feelings. Yeah, yeah. What a blessing that is, though, when you think about the phases yeah. that we're all in. They're in different phases of being, you know, a mom. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just encouraging to to know that, that the, the phase where your children are adults with their own kids and are able to feel comfortable coming to you. Mm -hmm. They feel confident coming to you because you've instilled that, you mm -hmm. know, in it. That's a blessing to hear that she felt comfortable telling you that. Because then I think about the first phase, like when they're toddler age and you're we can speak life and death into our own children and oh, how yes. they how they are raised. Just so like think, we do our own lives. Yeah, like yeah. it's yeah. important for us to speak positively. I mm. mean, of course, there there are times where you have to discipline and you know speak correction, but sure. but not that negative talk. You know, yeah. speaking positive because I remember doing that with Taylor. But but then I know now that she's seventeen. Mm. It's that it's that teenage age that I thought I I thought I was going to be exempt from <laughs> but not my kid so we have a great relationship <laughs> uh, 16 Ugh. like that's <laughs> it's, it's like zip she's doesn't say words to me so you know so I'm like oh man and then she's going through her whole like development into becoming an adult yeah. and learning how to communicate herself especially with all the things going on in our family too oh, learning yeah. how to articulate those emotions mm -hmm. and her confidence is, is shaken and so 
I'm learning how to hearing you say that yeah. even with your adult children is helpful to me to know how I can, when we have those moments where she needs to vent or talk to me, I can step back and ask God, God, help me to be what she needs right yeah, now. Yeah. You know, so that's that's a blessing to me. We all have them at every mm-hmm. phase of being a parent and really every phase of life. Yeah. Because you sure. like to think that as you grow older, that your confidence level will mm-hmm. grow. And it does because God, God helps you with that. But there are still bumps. That's why we have to have the Word of God rooted deeply yeah. in our lives. We have to go back to those basics, make sure that we are saying that about mm-hmm. who we are, that we are thinking those things, that we are saying those words out of our mouth and replacing all those other words, and that silences insecurity. And if you're feeling insecure, just don't feel bad about it. Right. You (laughs) Please, you are not alone. There is no one who doesn't deal with this. So we don't want anybody to think, oh, I'm not close enough to God. I don't have enough faith. No, not at we all. We are giving you tools to use. Yeah, we are through. not giving anybody guilt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, this has been great. Yes, Thank you I both love it. Mm-hmm. very Thank much. You. I think you're both pretty amazing. So I do you too. know, just I think you're great. Any any self doubt in any of that, um, you guys can just throw it out the window because <laughs> Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I happen to she know I happen to know <laughs> she told me too. that you are you are the cream of the crop. Ooh. So <laughs> Well, we want to remind you that all of the things that we were listening to from Joyce today and the things that we're studying are available to you as a free audio download. It is called The Cure for the Insecure, and we all need that cure. So that is some medicine you need to take today. Go to JoyceMeyer.org slash talk it out, and you can grab that free resource. Also, sign up for our friends list. They should sign up for our friends list. Definitely sign up. You might hear Aaron singing. <laughs> it will be a gem <laughs> just for our friends on the friends list. You just wait. <laughs> you get behind the scenes stuff and you also get reminder of when new episodes and you can even help us determine what kind of topics we oh, do. Definitely. That's something yeah. that's been happening yep. as well. And we also ask you to please subscribe, tell your friends about us, write good reviews if you feel like it. We're not twisting your arm, but um but we would really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, we'd like it. it. We'd like it. Yes. <laughs> Cuz our key is to bring as many people in here to study God's word together so that we can all grow in him, yeah. grow stronger yeah. together and be a sisterhood, you know, we be a support for one another. Yep. We do. We, we do. do. Yeah. So thank you all for being here. We love you. We think you are amazing. And we'll see you next time. Be confident. Bye. Bye. Bye.